Hey friends and welcome to this video and um, this is a continuation of um, a series of videos and this is a video looking at uh, the science paper 1 2017 GCE paper and this is for grade 12 and so we continue from where we left off we will continue from section B and that is B7 so here is our question B7 and in B7, we're given a figure, we're given a drawing. We have figure B7.1. And it says it shows magnetic field lines between the poles of two magnets. Yeah, we are given a drawing. We've got PQ, we've got R, we've got ST. And that is our figure B7.1. And we are asked firstly to name point R. And point R is this... Um, empty space where we do not have any magnetic field lines and we are asked to name this point. So at this point, this point doesn't have any field lines that are passing through this point and this point is known as the neutral, how do you spell neutral? It's an air, A L. neutral point. So point R is known as the neutral point. Then question B says, if P is a south pole, what are the poles Q and T? So if P is south pole, what is Q and what is T? So we should know that field lines always move from the north to the south. So if this is the south, and these field lines are moving from Q to P, meaning Q is the north, and similarly, S is north because these field lines are moving from S going to T. So S is, south, is north and T is south. So this is north, this is south. Similarly, this is north and this is south. And which ones have we been asked for? We've been asked for Q and T. So Q is north and T is south. So you can add pole, north pole and south pole. Then question C says, explain how soft iron keepers, explain how soft iron keepers help magnets retain their magnetis, magnetism for a longer period. Explain how soft iron keepers help magnets retain their magnetism for a longer period. So soft iron keepers, so when you talk of um, storing magnets, if you store magnets anyway, in any way that's, that, that's, that you deem as appropriate, sometimes they would get demagnetized. And so to store them in a proper way, they are stored with soft iron keepers. And these soft iron keepers will help the magnets not to get demagnetized or not to lose their magnetism property. So now, how do these soft iron keepers help magnets retain their magnetism for a longer period of time? So these keepers, what happens is that they will become or they will get induced uh, magnets. So when they, when they are close to the magnets, they will be induced to, 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 to be magnets. And their pores neutralize the pores of the bar magnet. And so this will help in storing and um, preserving the magnetism property of the magnets for a longer period. So I said, um, the keepers, the keepers become induced the keepers become induced magnets induced magnets and their pores and their pores neutralize the pores of the magnets neutralize the pores of magnets that is how they help in 
retaining the magnetism property for a longer period. So state two differences between iron and steel. So iron and steel have magnetic properties and they have different magnetic properties. So now you are asked to clarify and to state the different, the two different magnetic properties between iron and steel. So firstly, you need to know that iron easily gets magnetized. So iron gets easily magnetized whilst steel gets magnetized after a longer period or gets slowly magnetized. So difference number one is that iron gets magnetized faster than steel. Faster than steel. And for the second property is that um, in as much as iron gets magnetized faster, it easily loses its magnetism or it loses its magnetism faster compared to steel. So iron loses magnetism faster than steel. Faster than steel and that is the second difference and therefore we have two differences between the magnetic properties of iron and the magnetic properties of steel. So we can move on to question B8. B8 says um, the figure B8.1 shows three resistors connected to a 12 volts battery. So we've got this 12 volts battery, we've got two ohms resistor, for the 12 ohms resistor we've got a 6 ohms resistor. So what you see is that these two are connected in parallel whilst this one is connected in series to this whole arrangement that we have. So find the effective resistance between X and Y. So I'm assuming, because um, there wasn't any labeling, but since we're being asked about the effective resistance, I'm assuming the effective resistance is between this point and that point. So we have X and we have Y. So one of them should be Y. Um, so say that's X and this is this is Y. You're asked to find the effective resistance between these two points. So how do you find the resistance being offered by uh, two resistors in parallel? So when you have two resistors in parallel, the effective resistance, which is 1 over R, so say RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So here's something that you can remember. For as long as you have two resistors in parallel, you can simply say effective resistance or total resistance is simply equal to R1 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2, right? So in this case, our R1 will be 12 multiplied by 6 divided by um, 12 plus 6. So you use your calculator and you find that this will be brought down to number 4. So therefore your total resistance is 4. So even if you were to use this, this, this method, you would still arrive at an effective resistance of 12, right? So what is the effective resistance between X and Y? And we have agreed that our effective resistance is 4 ohms. And we are asked to find the current flowing in the battery. So the current flowing in this battery. So how do we find the current flowing in this battery? So now that we have found the effective resistance between these two points or the effective resistance being offered by these two parallel resistors, we can then, can then redraw our circuit to something like this. We've got our battery there. Got that, got that, got that, got that. And then we've got our two ohms. Uh, so let me just write it here. Okay, maybe not even to write it. Let's just draw resistors. We've got our two ohms. And then we've got an effective resistance being offered by these two, which we'll draw as one. So in this case, we'll not have a parallel 
circuit, but we will have a series circuit. So now the question is asking us to find the total uh, current passing through this 12 volt battery. And we have two ohms there, and we have four ohms there. But how do we find current? So we should know that current is given by the voltage over resistance. Remember your ohm's law? Good. So ohm's law states that, you should know that ohm's law is simply given by VIR, okay? So to find current, we simply say voltage over resistance. Now what is our voltage? Our voltage is 12. And what is our resistance? We've got two resistors, which are the two ohms, this one here, and the four ohms being offered as a effective resistance by the parallel circuit down there. So we'll find that our total resistance will be two plus four, which is six. So our total current will therefore be equal to six into 12, which gives us two amps. So therefore our current is two amps. Now the next question says, find the current flowing through the six ohms resistor. The current flowing through the six ohms resistor. So firstly, you need to know that current at this point is not the same as current at this point, at this point, at this point, and that, um, that point. But the current that is entering the battery is the same as the current that is leaving the battery. All right? Then apart from that, um, voltage, voltage is the same here, it's the same here, it's the same here, it's the same here, and so we find that, um, we shall find that, to find, what are we asked to find, sorry, the current flowing through the six ohms resistor. So to find the current in the six ohms resistor, we first need to know the voltage that is there, and that will help us to know the current that is flowing through the six ohms resistor. Okay, so to find that, we should know that. So firstly, what we need to find is the voltage that is going through um, the six ohms resistor. So now, how do we find the voltage through the six ohms resistor? How do we find the voltage through this resistor, which is four ohms? So the voltage that is going through the four ohms is the same as the voltage that is going through the six ohms and the 12 ohms. Right, because this is the effective voltage, this is the effective resistance, and the voltage there will be the same as the voltage there. Okay, so how do we work around that? So let's find the voltage going through the 4 ohms resistor, which is the voltage through the 12 and the 6. So to find that, we say um, this resistor is 4 ohms, so we'll say 4 divided by. Um, the total resistance, which is 4 plus 2, which is 2 plus 4, right? Okay, then this is multiplied by the total voltage, which is 12. So this is the voltage at 4. And then this will give us, this will give us an 8. Okay, so we've got 8 volts going through this point and going through this point. 8 volts at that point. And that is the 8 volts that is here, it is the 8 volts that's there, it's the 8 volts that's, that's there. Right? Now that we have the 8 volts, now we can find the current passing through the 6 ohms. So we know that current is equal to voltage over resistance, right? We've got the voltage of 8 volts and we've got the resistance of 6, right? And when we divide that, this will give us 1.33 amps. So now, um, as I said, current that is leaving at this point should be the current that is entering at that point. So current here will be um, equal to the current that is leaving. And current here, current through that branch and current through this branch should be equal to the current that is entering, which is a 2, which we found as a 2 ohms, 2 amps. And it should be the same as the current that is leaving this, 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 this system that we have. 
So it should be two amps there. So mean this plus that should give us two amps. So we can prove our answer by finding the current through the 12 ohms resistor. And we'll say current equals to voltage over resistance. Our voltage being eight, our resistance being 12, and this will give us 0 0.666. And when you add 0 0.666 plus 1.333, this will give you um, 1.9999. Nine, nine, nine. And when you run that off, it will give you a 2.0 amps, okay? So, we've proved that our answer is correct. And so, therefore, the current through the 6 ohms resistor is 1.33 amps. So, this will give us 1.33 amps as our current through the 6 ohms resistor. So now we are here looking at the final question in section B, which is, section, which is question B9. The question says, polonium, which has 210, polonium 210 with uh, a mass number of 210 and uh, a neutral number of uh, 84. Sorry, uh, polonium, which has uh, a mass number of 210 and atomic number of 84 can undergo radioactive decay by emitting an alpha particle to form lead. So this will go when I go uh, alpha uh, radiation or uh, alpha emission and to form lead which is PB. The first question is saying what is an alpha particle? What is an alpha particle? So when you hear of alpha particle, the first word that should come to your head is positive. So alpha particles are positive. So now how would you put that in, in, in words? So it'd say alpha particles 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 are positively charged. Uh, are positively charged and they comprise of two protons and two neutrons. Positively charged comprising so as you know protons are positively charged so they have two protons and they have two neutrons. So just by that you know that this is a positively charged particle because it has protons only. Does it have electrons because the electrons are negative whilst the protons are positive. So question B says write the equation for the radioactive decay of polonium. So we've got two sorry so two ten and eighty four polonium PO undergoes radioactive decay so undergoes um, uh, alpha emission, so an alpha particle is emitted. So an alpha particle has got two protons, two neutrons, so meaning its mass number is two plus two, which is four, and its, its um, atomic number is two, because it has two protons, so two protons. And an alpha particle is simply a, a helium, um, electron or helium um, atom, so we have helium, then plus. So now if we remove 4 from the 210 and remove 2 from the 84, what we will have is 206 and 82. And this will be, we've been told it goes from PO to PB, so we have lead as the particle or as the atom that has been given out after alpha radiation. Then the next question says state one use of alpha radiation. State one use of alpha radiation. So, so alpha radiation is used in cancer treatment. That's one. Apart from cancer treatment, it can also be used in smoke detectors. Smoke detectors. So alpha particles are used in, or alpha radiation is used in the principle of 
cancer treatment and as, as well as in the, in the, in the, in the principle of um, smoke detectors. So this is where we'll end in this video and um, please do look forward to seeing the video, the next video and in the, in the next video we'll look at section C and that will be the end of this series on um, the grade 12 GCE 2017 paper one. So thank you very much. Remember to subscribe, remember to hit the uh, notifications button so that you can be notified as soon as new videos are uploaded. And remember to tell your friends and remember to, uh, to download the app. And if at all you have any questions, please do feel free to leave a question in the comment section as well as leave questions on the eSchool app. So thank you very much for watching the video and God bless.